Hey FishTube, it's me, Stephen P, and my real job that pays the bills is making me do stuff, and I'm working on some new fish room stuff, and editing takes a long time, so... It's a filler video, cause I am busy as hell. Our dining room has been a fish room for a while, but for some reason we've kept a dining room table there, a cheap one at that, and some chairs, like we were trying to hold on to being a normal family with a place to eat where there wasn't a screen. Of course, surfaces are also a fine place to put stuff. So so yeah, no more fish room denial. The dining room table has gotta go to another part of the house to take up space. And then this conversation happened on a live stream. Do I go with two, three foot wide, slightly more narrow um, racks so I can just have 29s? Or do I go with the single 48 inch wide by 24 inch depth 40 So can I offer a third? undiscussed option of return one of the three feet racks and replace it with a four foot rack because we saw that we have more than six feet of space so we could have seven feet do we i i mean we can measure but we've got that set of drawers there and we'd have to move figure out where to put that in but you know, i like, i gave you a solution for that i said the table under the mirror we can replace it with something that doesn't have a cabinet and put the um, shelves under yeah, that. But we've got stuff stored in there too. So that's like. Yes, and I told you, put that in the attic. They're fancy dishes that we don't use. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, that's I have answers and then, for things. And then we've got that plastic set of drawers with no place, like nothing to do with those. So once I eventually understood the solution, this happened. No more table, and now we got a three foot wide husky rack and a four foot wide one, so there's room for 30 gallon and 40 gallon tanks. Still haven't made their separate stand I'm gonna use for these two small aquariums, but that'll be soon. And I guess the next step is cord management. I'm planning to do only sponge filters for these racks just to keep it simple, and I got this big ass pond force pump that doesn't seem to be unbearably loud. And for lids, I'm using corrugated plastic from Home Depot. I'm gonna do black backgrounds for all the tanks, JC and P lights, and at least for the first couple of tanks, I'm using Seachem Fluorite and Carabsea Sand. No particular reason other than I want to experiment with layering substrates. My two favorite substrates thus far are Seachem Fluorite Regular in Red or a few inches of coarse sand, so let's put them together and see what sort of plant growth and natural filtration we can get out of it. Immediate plans? Start breeding Pseudomagills and Corydoras. And I know you're like, hey, wouldn't you want to do bare bottom for breeding tanks? Well, I'm going to try to keep things a little more natural, and besides, every tank in this house is a mandatory planted aquarium. I already have 10 other tanks running, so it's in my best interest to go slow with adding more. I'm not dependent on fish breeding for income, so I don't need to maximize output and make sure every fry survives. I'd rather see how things play out a little more naturally, especially with the corridors. With the pseudomagills, I'll probably still harvest and separate the eggs just to get the hang of feeding and raising them, but what I'd like to see long-term are some well-established tanks full of microfauna that can support the tiniest to fry on their own. If it doesn't work, no real harm done, and if it does work, well, that'll get boring quick, so we'll have to try something else. And now I have the room to try more stuff. So what do you think I should consider for the next set of tanks in the more distant future? Leave a comment letting me know and such, and press all the other buttons too if you wouldn't mind. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.